Hi, I'm Karen Hodgins, creator of Nifty Numbers, Math Medley, and Gelling with Geometry Family Math Hunts. And in this video, I'm going to share with you my latest collaborative project. Now, it's soccer season for the elementary kids here, so I thought it would be super fun if we made a collaborative soccer ball. And here is the result of our collaborative project. Um, we actually ended up making two soccer balls, um, and I'll share the second one with you in just um, a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the directions first. Um, and then, as usual, I'm gonna go into a little bit of the math. Okay, so for this project, you're going to need a whole bunch of colorful um, pens or crayons or um, colored pencils. I like to use Sharpies because you can see how vibrant the colors are. You're gonna need scissors. Um, I usually have about 15 scissors spread out um, across the table so that um, 15 um, students and their parents can um, work at the same time. And then you're going to need some rulers and ballpoint pens. And the ballpoint part's really important because they're going to they're be pressing firmly with that. You're going to need um, a hot glue gun. I use the small glue guns and I also have an extra one there um, just in case something happens with the first one. Um, then you're going to need the patterns for the hexagons and the pentagons that they're going to be coloring in. And when I copy these off, I copy them off on tag board or cardstock because it makes it um, a lot easier to put the soccer ball together um, when the paper is just a little bit thicker. And then I cut these into a whole bunch of um, hexagons and pentagons like this, so they're separated. And I just spread these across the table and they um, choose the one that they want to work on. And then I have, um, I created some table tents. And these table tents, again, they get spread out because on the table tents are um, the directions. Um, the um, PDFs for the table tents and the patterns and the other thing that you're gonna need, um, the net, okay, all of these can be found on um, our website, familymathlight.com, under the resources section. Okay, so the table tent describes the steps that the participants are going to take. And it's really super simple. So the first thing they're going to do is choose a pentagon or a hexagon, and they're going to um, color it in. Then they're going to cut around the perimeter of their shape. Okay, this one's not colored in but there we've got it all cut out along the perimeter. And then they're gonna use that ruler and that ballpoint pen, and they're going to score the tabs, okay? Because what that does is it makes it super easy then to fold those tabs once it's, once it's scored, okay? Just like that, super easy. Once that's done, they hand their completed polygon to the station facilitator. Now the station facilitator um, is in charge of putting the panels together, and I'll talk about the panels in just a second. But first I wanna go over the rules of the um, hot glue gun. I like to use students, fifth graders and up, um, as my station facilitators. They do a fabulous job. Um, and so the student who is going to be um, running this station is gonna be in charge, is the only one in charge of the hot glue gun, and they know that. So um, um, I go over the rules with them and, and um, I have never had a problem um, with uh, anything happening with the hot glue gun. So, um, okay, so that uh, student is going to be putting the panels together. Now back to that net, okay. So here is one um, representation of a net of a soccer ball. Um, <clears throat> the net is, a net is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional object. So two dimensions, length and width, three dimensions, length, width, and height. So when you cut out the net and you put all the edges together, you're gonna end up with your soccer ball. In fact, I even have, here's an old soccer ball that belonged to my boys, okay, and I cut it apart. So here would be another net of a, um, a soccer ball. And then I have this at the station so that a participants can pick it up and play with it and see um, that that you know, uh, can turn into that uh, soccer ball. Okay, so the station facilitator um, is going to be collecting all of these polygons and 
creating what I'm gonna call these individual ones here as panels. You can see I numbered them one, two, three, four. So here's panel number one, panel number two, and so forth. And panel number one, when it's glued together, and obviously this isn't colored in, but um, this is my sample. Um, but um, they, so this would be represent panel one, and I even numbered it on the other side, and here's um, panel um, two. And actually, there's going to be um, eight of these panels and two of these panels that create your net. Now, when I'm talking to the station facilitator about gluing these together, and we hot glue gun them because there's no waiting around really for them to dry, um, you want to get those edges um, pretty perfect because that's going to really help when you put the, um, the ball together. Now this is as far as the station facilitator gets making these panels. <clears throat> I'm the one that's actually going to put the panels together and create the ball because it gets a little bit trickier. But let me show you. I told you we ended up making two balls that night. Actually we were slightly short a few uh, polygons to make um, two balls and you can see here what I did is I just filled in with um, the, the pieces that were missing. I just um, filled those in with the blanks. So here is what the soccer ball is going to look like as you're putting it together. So you can see here, see that? And when those edges start coming together, how beautiful you know that, that looks when it starts to turn into that. Um, spherical shape so and then if, if right here we put these edges together and then those edges and so forth and let me hold it up so you can see the panels okay and so there are the, these are all the panels and you can see how that looks like the net right um, so there's the the net um, creating that soccer ball so um, and it's really fun when it starts to come together um, and look like that ball it's just um, kind of amazing Okay, so that's the project. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the math and that starts with the um, table tents because on the bottom of the table tent, I have several um, questions um, for parents to talk to their, um, their kids about. Now at all of our um, family math nights, all of our kits, we have them leveled beginning, intermediate, and advanced. And so I use that idea to create these questions down here. So the first question is for all levels, beginning, intermediate, and advanced, and it simply says to look carefully at the soccer ball and what do you notice? So it's a very, very open-ended question. Now, in advance, I didn't want to um, have a whole bunch of soccer balls um, on the large soccer balls on the table for them to, to look at because it would take up too much space. So I went to ustoy.com and I found a bunch of these super cute little mini soccer balls and I bought those. You can get 12 of these for $11.95. Um, and so I spread these out on the table. So for that first question when it says look at the soccer ball, these are the ones that they're picking up and looking at. What do you notice? So a kindergartner couldn't say, hey, it looks like a ball. Or maybe a fifth grader will say it's spherical. Or maybe they'll talk about the shapes that they see. Or maybe even the, the colors. So very, very open-ended question. What do you notice? Okay, then at the beginning level, the question is, what is the name of the shape with exactly five sides, exactly six sides? Now we're getting into some definitions and vocabulary. Okay. <clears throat> Intermediate, if there are 32 faces, flat sides, so each one of these is a, is a face. So if there are 32 faces on a soccer ball and 12 of them are pentagons, how many faces are hexagons? Now, traditionally, we would say that this is a subtraction problem, and it is a subtraction problem. But one of the goals of the Common Core is to get kids to think flexibly about numbers. So we could actually turn this into an addition problem. So if, um, if there are 12 pentagons, and we add 10 to that, that would be 22, and then we add another 10, that's 32. Two tens is 20, so that's 20 hexagons. Very cool. Okay, so at the advanced, it says, if each of the 12 pentagons shares five vertices with hexagons, how many total vertices are on a soccer ball? <clears throat> and to talk about this one, I'm gonna use my, um, my prototype. This is the soccer ball that I made when I was figuring out how to do this project. Okay, so here's a pentagon, and if each pentagon shares five vertices, with hexagons, 
then how many vertices are there all together? And that would be a multiplication problem. You would multiply 5 times 12, and you would get 60, right? Yeah, 60. <clears throat> um, okay, so um, here's a question um, that a student may ask. They may look at the soccer ball and say, well, wouldn't this, this, and this be considered three vertices? And, and it's a pretty valid question. Um, but the key is, is that they all share one point, so it's actually just one. So, okay. Um, now, I want to get into a little bit more of the geometry of a soccer ball. Um, because this soccer ball, unless you are uh, playing in the World Cup, this is a modern day soccer ball. And, and traditionally, we see um, the white hexagons and the black um, pentagons, but this is actually called a truncated icosahedron. Um, <clears throat> and an icosahedron, okay, anytime you hear hedron in geometry, it, you're going to be in three dimensions, um, length, width, and height. When you hear polygon, you're in two dimensions, length and width. Okay, so your icosahedron, um, I made a, a sample here. Here's my sample icosahedron. An icosahedron is made up of 20 triangles, okay? And an icosahedron is actually one of the five platonic solids, okay? And a platonic solid is a regular convex polyhedron with regular um, or with congruent faces. Okay, so there's a lot of vocabulary in that definition, so we'll take one, it one by one. Okay, so regular, so all edges are the same. Convex, meaning protruding out. Um, polyhedron, we talked about that, with um, congruent, and congruent means exactly the same faces, and those are the flat sides. Um, we didn't talk about um, polygon, the definition of polygon, but polyhedrons are made of polygons, and a polygon is a closed um, figure made up of three or more line segments. Okay, so here's my icosahedron, one of the five platonic solids. Um, the other platonic solids are your tetrahedron, which is made up of four um, triangles, your hexahedron, commonly known as the cube, and that's made up of six squares, your octahedron, octa, eight, and that's made up of eight triangles, then your dodecahedron, and that dodec 2 plus 10, that's made up of 12 pentagons. Okay, so those are your platonic solids. And what's really cool about the five platonic solids is that because they are made up of congruent faces, can you see them there? They lend themselves very well to being dice. Okay, and we use a lot of these in our kits, so too fun. Okay, so Back to my um, icosahedron and my truncated icosahedron. So here's my icosahedron, right? And a soccer ball is a truncated icosahedron. So let's say I was going to take these points and slice them off, truncate them. And truncate simply means to shorten. <clears throat> so if I sliced off this point, what shape would be left underneath? And you can look at these edges here and they kind of give you a clue as to what would be left underneath. But I'm going to go back to my prototype to show you this. Okay, so here is my <clears throat> pentagon. Ah, I'm going ahead of myself. Actually, here is, let's pretend that this has 12 points on it like that. So it's an icosahedron. And if I slice it off, I'm left with, right there, your pentagon. So that's why your soccer ball has 12 pentagons. It has, because <clears throat> you sliced off all 12 of those points. And this becomes your truncated icosahedron. And by the way, a truncated icosahedron is one of 12, Archi is one of 13 Archimedean solids. And those are your um, regular, um, convex polyhedrons with two or more um, um, polygons. And so, of course, we've got pentagons and hexagons in ours. Okay, so um, as I was doing research for this project, I discovered why a soccer ball is also called a buckyball and how the buckyball is connected to this pencil. And I was so fascinated by that, that that's going to be the topic of my next 
collaborative project, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I can guarantee you that the next time these kids go to soccer practice, they're going to be looking at the soccer ball in a whole new way. So have fun.